out of all the things I could feel and pick and look back at my personal history, I would say there's some magical qualities. You know, Seth talks about the magical self. And I'm in touch with that, as many of you all are. Um, so this is what I came up with, and it feels right. When we tune into that deeper, that level, that more expansive level, you know, there's a sense of, of, of love, and there's a sense of joy, and there's a sense of uh, spiritual uh, awakening that um, we don't really understand, you know, in day-to-day -day life, and we don't experience it um, in our traditional world where we're operating, you know, behind four walls, or within four walls, behind the desk, you know, at a computer, um, with, uh, you know, using cell phones and technology. This is beyond technology, this is beyond cell phones, this is beyond, you know, the, um, the like I said, the five senses. just talking about this or talking about that or giving information about this and being in the head but we were doing experiences and meditations or bringing people in who would actually be able to give experiences to people and to touch their lives in real ways and display their gifts and that was always my orientation toward people. experience with the, the president of the organization, Amy Bortner Gialuca. Uh, she was channeling um, the Angel Escordia and uh, she does at the end of, of the channeling she does these tones. The angel makes tones come out of her mouth and every atom in my vi body vibrated from the tones and ever since then I've been more intuitive. Teenager, people were freaked out by it and I stopped talking about it. And I recovered it about 20 years ago when a friend who was taking psychic, psychic development classes, bless her, um, she's not here tonight, said she was channeling away and she picked up a quartz crystal that was sitting with us and she plopped it in my hands and she said, it's your turn. And it was all over for the spring at that point. And the next thing I knew, there were words flowing out of my mouth and this stone was talking to me. And since then, everywhere I go, stones, trees, you name it, there's just this wave of, it's a live one, talk to her, she'll tell people what we're saying. So that's kind of my experience. Um, and in the past year or so, I've gotten really, really loud about this, because Guy said, we need to be really loud about this. Several of us started talking about bringing different kinds of programs because again their emphasis before was on channeling and so I just feel that since then the momentum of the society has really picked up and we've been continuous we've been consistent and um, I've seen the audiences expand um, not for every program because they're as uh, Jim had pointed out some people come for some programs and not for others because they're very selective about what it is that they're interested in. But I think that the momentum of the of the New Hope Metaphysical Society as a whole has really um, grown over the last year. I like that there's a variety of, of um, disciplines that are represented. Um, I do enjoy that. Um, I particularly like the galleries where, you know, the mediums come in and they give messages from spirit. That's very nice. It's a little book. I don't know what this book is. It's a little red book. Hmm. It, I look in it and I thought it said St. Teresa on it of Avila. Any connection to that? Interesting. It's a little prayer book, but it's not the regular Bible. 
and uh, she has all these words in it. She's, I think she's one of your guides. And I don't know anything about her, to be honest with you, but she says, your, let's see if I can get this, your safety or your grounding or your purpose is to find ecstasy, which is a strange message, because you would think ecstasy takes you off the ground, but actually for you, it will help you to be here stronger. Because there's been difficulty being on this planet for you. But the channelings have just been very profound. And I, I've been to some channelings where I've, uh, particularly Escoria, who Amy channels, is a beautiful, loving spirit and loving um, presence. And I've always felt um, an embrace when, whenever Amy has channeled Escoria. Um, and that, that's what, what that really touches me. I, I really feel a. Um, a sense of returning to something or connecting with something that feels familiar and uh, feels very um, loving and welcoming. Um, and you know, there's there's only something. I, I can't say there's one particular incident, but I, I can say that each time I've been to some of the different uh, events, meetings that we have, um, I've been impressed with the level of um, information and the um, the depth. Of where people share in terms of their um, the capabilities to connect with that which is beyond um, the ordinary, uh, and I and I really feel each one each 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 meeting has been um, very very moving for me. So. Rather than just sticking, you know, uh, with one or two, you know, focuses, which ends up being dogmatic, and I hate dogma. <laughs> yeah, we 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 encourage free thinking, basically, yeah. and, and encourage questioning authority and questioning um, the conventional authority, and trying to t look into your own inner authority, which is really what your spiritual growth is about, is understanding that you do have a spiritual authority, that you have a soul, you have a higher self. You know, you are connected to a soul family, ultimately up to God. God is all that is. So along the way, there's all kinds of uh, resources and information and support and advice and counsel that you can tap into. And channeling is one way of tapping into that source. But people can trust just their own intuition. They can get a little more involved and get more psychic, or they could start to channel or whatever, they can become inspired and Networking. become very creative. And, and then it's important also to network you know, with each other so that we know that we're not alone in this path, that uh, many, many, many of us now are on this path of opening up to our own spiritual you know, identity. And religion may or may not serve us as much as it had in the past, there's too much pedagogy, too much corruption, too much dogma. People are looking for a much more broader, expansive point of view, which we hope to present, you know, through the New Hope Metaphysical Society.
not being afraid to move into the intuitive self. That America, being a materialistic country and a very rationalistic brain of country, is a very left brain of country. And so often there's a little war going on between the left brain and the right brain. And so artists and people who are intuitives, really, it's becoming better. It's starting to integrate. But I would just like to suggest to people that this group has kind of always been a little bit on the cutting edge, as this church has been, some other organizations I've been, and to not be afraid to open to that space inside oneself that is more intuitively oriented and has much deeper connections to all that is around us, and particularly that is unseen, and to not just trust you know, your belief system or your intellect or what you can see with your eyes or your senses. Bhagavad Gita talks, of course, a great deal about that. Most spiritual books talk a great deal about that. Don't rely on your senses. It's only a teeny fraction. Yeah.